Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. This is part six of the beginner's Java tutorial, and in this tutorial, we are going to look at if statements. Um, in the last tutorial, we saw for loops, and in the next tutorial, we're going to look at um, getting user input. But before we do that, we're going to look at if. Um, so go to File, New Java Project as usual in Eclipse and I'll call this Tutorial 6 Next Finish and Let's create a new class as usual By now you will hopefully remember how to do this pretty well I'll call it Application and uh, just for kicks I'm going to type the main method out um, from scratch um, public static void main string array args which might sound like Chinese to you or if you are Chinese it might sound like Greek but don't worry about that so if we've already seen um, one or two examples of conditional statements um, for example if I type bool boolean um, boolean um, what should we call it? Cond for condition maybe equals one less than six and then I can do sysout sysout control space um, cond and this will display true when I run it true um, another possibility would be I could say um, let's say three greater than eight which is false. Um, there's also a not equal to, I could say um, 5 not equal to 2, which is of course true. We're using the um, exclamation mark for a not symbol here. True. Um, or let's say 5 not equal to 5, which is false. And there is of course a test for equality for equals equals three which is false it's really important to note here that um, a single equal sign means assignment it means you're setting something equal to something to test for equality you need equals equals it's not immediately obvious that the two things are different but if you think about it a bit they are two completely different things um, assigning equality and testing equality that is and let's try 5 equals equals 7 okay great false let's use these conditions in an if statement an if statement looks like this um, you type if which is the keyword and then you need a condition in round brackets after that and then you have curly brackets which enclose some code that you want to run if the condition is true so for the condition, let's try um, 4 equals 4, which is true, of course. Sys out. Um, let's say, yes, it's true. So I'll, I will run this code if this condition is true. And if it isn't, I won't do anything. Um, ooh, what do I do? I've, I've got to get rid of this, of course. I use Control D to get rid of whole lines, which is a handy shortcut. Yes, it's true. Um, or if I give it a condition that isn't true, let's say 5 not equal to 5, not equal to 5, then nothing happens. Now, um, of course I can use variables in there, which is sort of the whole point. Let's say I've got a, um, a variable uh, integer maybe int um, int my int equals 20 let's say I can say if my int is less than 30 which it is then I'll do the print um, now often I want to take some kind of action and uh, if the condition isn't true, I want to take a different action. So let's say 
my int less than 10. Okay, this is false, so at the moment nothing happens because this condition is false, so it doesn't do the code. But I could put a else statement. So I type the keyword else and then I have curly brackets as well. Notice that Eclipse is automatically adding the second curly bracket when I type the first one and hit return. And here, I'll, here I will type system.out.println um, no, it, no, it's false. Okay. No, it's false. Um, so, or if I set this equal to something that is true, my int less than 100, then I get the first bit, but the else doesn't do anything. There is also a else if. Um, for example, I can say else if and then round brackets and I can put another condition in here. So here I could say, for example, if my int is less than 100, I want to do this. Else if my int is um, greater than, yeah, so here I've got my int less than 10, um, sorry. And here I can say, if my int is greater than 20, I'll do this. So, and I'll set my int um, to 15. And then nothing happens because this is false, so it doesn't do this. And this else, else if condition is also false, so it doesn't do this. But if I set it to less than 10, this will be true. So I'll get this. And if I set it to less than, to greater than 20, I'll set this equal to 30, then I get this condition. What happens if I say else if um, my int less than 20 and set it equal to 5? Now both conditions are true, but if I run it, as you can see, um, these are kind of mutually exclusive. So it's saying, if it's less than 10, yes, do this. Forget about everything else. Um, and that's the idea behind else if. This is an alternative. So if one of these, if this clause um, is true and it does this, it's not going to do this. This only happens if else if this, this isn't true and this is. Um, I can combine uh, if, else, if, and else, of course. So I can say else, sys out, um, none of the above. And I can say, so this says it's less than 10. Um, let's make this say it's greater than 20. And let this be 15. Now this isn't true, this isn't true. So it will just do this because um, this is what it does if none of these conditions are true none of the above. Um, as usual, um, if this seems complex, just have a play around with it and try creating ifs and else ifs and elses and see what happens. Um, and of course, um, usually you, you probably use this with some kind of input or, some, or the results of some kind of calculation. And in, as I say, in the next tutorial, we'll get on to looking at user input. For now, let me just show you one more thing. Um, we've seen while loops before, so a while loop um, could look like this. I can say int um, loop, for example, equals zero. So I have a loop counter which usually you set to zero to start with, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be. Um, while loop is less than five, let's say, do loop sys out. Um, and I'll write looping plus loop. Now, um, so this at the moment is an infinite loop. If I run this, it just loops and loops and loops. Um, because loop is always less than five, so it will always do the loop. And I could stop that by incrementing the loop here. Loop plus plus will add one to the loop, as we saw last time. It will add one to the loop counter. Um, and in this case, every time the loop executes. So now we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Um, but another interesting way of doing it, um, which is sometimes useful, is I could say if loop equals 5, then break. And the break statement just immediately stops the loop executing. Um, so this will just jump out of the loop. Um, if I type, um, yeah, let's um, let's type this out here, and I'll type running. Okay, so well, um, why isn't this working? If loop is equal to five, break. Um, oh, <laughs> I forgot to increment loop. Right, let's um, put loop plus plus here. Okay, so I'm setting loop equal to zero. I'm saying do the loop while loop is less than five. But screw that, I'm going to just put true and have an infinite loop here. Um, and then here I'll say if loop equals five, break out of the loop. And here I increment the loop. So now if I run this, you can see what's happening. Is it's printing looping zero, running, looping one, running, and so on, till we get to five. Um, and then as soon as the loop is equal to five, so it still does this, but then the if says if loop equals five, break, and at that point it jumps out of the loop, completely jumps out, and it doesn't even get to these statements here. There's no running down here. Um, okay, that's it for this tutorial, and I hope you'll join me again next time. You can find more information and tutorials on caveofprogramming.com. And until then, happy coding. Thank you.